How's it going Orthodontist? We've got the whiteboard here again today. I'm super excited about this whiteboard session about branding, how to brand your orthodontic practice. If you didn't see last week's video, make sure you go check that one out. We talk about the marketing funnel and that video is super important to understand this video, so make sure you go watch it. If you're interested at any point in booking a call with me or a member of my team, the link is down below. So let's get into this talking about marketing and branding. And one more thing before we jump into it, if you'd rather read this in a blog post format, it's on our website, you can check that out. So how to brand your orthodontic practice. We talked last week about how messaging is the most important thing. You need to get that done before you do any sort of metrics, any sort of trying to get a million eyeballs on your practice, you need to have something over here dialed in which is called messaging and branding. Everything in messaging and branding, literally everything comes down to one thing, which is what type of person do you want to serve? Who do you want to come into your practice? Because the way that you craft your message is going to attract certain people and repel other people. And that's good. It should repel some people because if it didn't, then it wouldn't attract the people that you actually want to come in. And we call that person your dream customer. And these are eyes here if you can't tell, but your dream customer is looking at everything else in your brand. These are all the elements of your brand that we're going to go over. But your dream customer is looking at every single part of this, even if they don't know it, even if they're completely oblivious. This is what they're looking at. This is what their subconscious is trying to register and understand if they like you as a brand. So let's jump into each one of these elements here. The first one is your vision and values. This is super crucial. If you worked with any sort of orthodontic marketing consultant like Dino Watt, they're going to go over your vision and values. And that's because if your team or you aren't clear on your vision and values, then you know, the experience, the customer experience when somebody comes in is going to be abysmal. You need to understand why you're in business besides just straightening teeth. Because when you have a higher purpose, you can rally your team around that and it creates a much better customer experience for your patients. If you wanna see a good video on this, Dr. Grant Collins gave a great keynote on this and I'll link it somewhere so that you can watch it. So I've got some examples here of good orthodontic practice, vision slash values. Dr. Grant Collins, his is service to others. That's Rochester Orthodontics. Fishbine Orthodontics, there's his family, integrity, service, humility which spells fish. Those are the four things that they focus on the most. And then uh, thirdly, creating lasting memories within our communities. That's, uh, I don't have the name of the practice, but I thought that was a great one when I heard of it. All of these things provide a single point of focus or multiple points of focus, but a concentrated area where your team and practice can focus around and create a good experience for your customers. But the reason that it's so important is because this is like woven into all the marketing that you do. It's mixed in there. If this is the recipe, you know, the, the vision and values is the flower. If you're making cookies, the vision and values is the flower. It's in everything. It doesn't just add a little bit of something to the cookie. It's the base of the cookie. This is everything. So make sure that you get clear on your visions and values. And then after that, you've got your brand personality. So your visions and values are going to inform your brand personality. Think about this as you know once you're clear on who your dream customer is think about your brand personality as this person's best friend who would your dream customer be best friends with what sort of personality would they have and that's what your brand needs to be examples of words that you might use to describe your brand personality are like fun immersive easy easygoing premium unique caring something like that where you know if, if somebody thinks about your brand these are the words that should come to mind that's your brand personality. Brand personality is going to inform your tagline, which everybody knows what a tagline is, but nobody understands how powerful it can be. And the reason that it can be so valuable is you're communicating exactly what your dream customer wants, hopefully in just one sentence, which is super powerful. So I'll give you some good examples of taglines that do this really well. Premier Orthodontics in Arizona, their tagline is world-class braces and Invisalign you can comfortably afford. Excellent. They know exactly who their dream customer is, somebody who wants affordable braces, but a good end result, and that's what they've crafted their tagline around. This is Frost Orthodontics in Arizona as well. Artistic, beautiful smiles are what we create. Unbelievable experiences are what we provide. So a little bit more, a different vibe there. They're not going for affordability. And then the third one is we have the right solution for every smile. That's Graham Orthodontics in Salt Lake City. So after tagline, we've got your logo. Your logo communicates your brand personality in a symbol. Symbols are really powerful because people can remember them. Logos do a lot. You know, Apple, like this is so powerful that just slapping a logo on something nowadays can increase its value 
by tens of thousands of dollars. So make sure that you get yours right and that you're reflecting your brand personality and your logo, not just creating a logo that has like teeth on it because it looks cool. So along with your logo, you're also gonna have brand colors and brand typography, which is here. And it's important that you keep this consistent on your marketing materials, on your website, anywhere that you're running ads or putting marketing out there, you need to have the same colors and the same typography because that's gonna help people recognize your logo, recognize your brand personality, understand who you are, and eventually come in for treatment. These last two really go together as well. So we've got your attractive character or your local celebrity, and then your backstory. So people tend to be able to identify better with a person than with a logo or with you know words on a page because people like people, that's just the way that we're wired. So in addition to having a logo, you should also have a person that is the face of your business. And usually that's gonna end up being the doctor. And if you're a doctor, you're like, oh, I hate being the, the face of the business, I'm so ugly, I'm old, whatever it is, just get over it and put your face out there because that, more than anything, is gonna help attract the right ideal customers into your business. When they understand what type of person you are, there's a lot of content about you online or of you online, then they're going to be able to say, I like this person or I don't like this person. And before they come in for a consultation, they're going to be much more sold on you as a person if you're sharing your backstory and you're sharing your flaws and you're talking about what type of person you are. So again, I'll link a video by Grant Collins here. This is their backstory video. It's an emotional video about how they decided to start their practice. So talking about straightening teeth, it's great. There's a lot of doctors who love to talk about that all day, how it increases self-esteem, how they get to change smiles every day. That's great. But what I love about this video by Grant Collins is they're not talking about teeth at all. They're talking about their story when it comes to starting their business, how scared they were, how nobody called them on the first day and they were so scared about it. Sharing this story really helps people connect with them as people. And then they end up wanting to get treatment because they feel like they know the doctor on a personal level and they want to you know, get closer to him and they know that they're gonna be taken care of because of this cool story and, and all the content that he or she has put out online. So these are all the elements of your brand. Again, uh, excellent things to consider. You probably already have a logo, all of these things, but you might consider rebranding and thinking about all of these things. On the other side, so let's flip the whiteboard around here. I've got three things that you can do today to improve your branding and messaging so that when you launch your ad campaign or whatever else it is that you're doing, uh, it's going to be successful. So number one here is to do a psychographic survey. And what psychographics refers to is the reason why people buy. So demographics is the profile of the people that buy, like how old they are, what gender they are, what ethnicity, but psychographics is the reasons why they buy, which in my opinion is much more important to understand. So the way that you conduct a psychographic survey is that you get you know, from 10 to 30 people who have taken treatment from you and you interview them and you ask them about everything that went into the process of them buying braces or Invisalign. You ask them to talk about when their dentist recommended it. You know, how many other doctors did they go see? What was it about your practice and the consultation that helped them make the decision to move forward with you instead of the other doctors that they visited? All of these things are super important. And when you interview like 30 people about it, you're gonna to start to see patterns and you're gonna understand what your dream customer actually cares about. So then the second one here is to conduct a demographic analysis. I don't think this one is as important, but you can hop on Fiverr. Uh, I might link somebody down below. But basically when you go to Fiverr, you can hire somebody to analyze all of the demographic information in your area. How many people from what race, how many orthodontists per capita, all of these things. And that's gonna help you just have a belief, understand more on a data-driven level what your area is like, although you probably understand it already. And then the third one here is to create your dream customer avatar. So we talked about your dream customer over here, how they're looking at all these things, but what you need to do is become clear on this first. So having your psychographic data, your demographic data, you're gonna write up an avatar. Think about this like a Sims character that you just create from scratch. And you should give them a name and they, you should know exactly what it is that they want. So when you're in team meetings and you're discussing a potential change, you say, hey, you know, would Brittany want that? Would Brittany really like that? Or what would Dale think about this? Having crystal clear who your dream customer is and creating that avatar, writing everything you know about them, everything they care about, everything about their socioeconomic background, you will be able to craft a message that speaks directly to that dream customer. And then all of the dream customers in your area are going to resonate with it and they will come into your practice. I guarantee, I guarantee, that this is going to improve your marketing, make a big difference on your bottom line, so don't ignore it. Please go do this. Reach out to us if you have any questions or if you wanna schedule a strategy session for Facebook and Instagram ads, 
as well as text message reactivation. We've had some awesome successes lately and we would love to see you on the ortho patients team. So go check us out on the website. I really hope this was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments down below what stuck out to you and what you're going to implement in your practice. And I will see you next week for a discussion on social media posting, our first uh, video about metrics. We've just finished messaging and I will see you next week on that video.